Dance Wonder. Woo! Yes! <laughs> yeah. Hey, welcome everybody to the Coach's Corner podcast with myself and RJ. We've got a guest on Zoom today. <laughs> I'll do a little intro for you. Our guest today is a former professional volleyball player participating in both the Summer Olympics in Atlanta in 1996 and the Pan Am Games in 2003 in the Dominican Republic. I guess I should tell you, you should be a professional volleyball player. And today she's a personal trainer and coach. Everybody, welcome Wanda Gwinnett. Welcome, Wanda. Good morning, Wanda. <laughs> Gwinnett. Gwinnett. Is that well, how you say it? How do you say it? Gwinnett. Gannett. 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 Oh, Gannett. 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Wanda, we got a wicked photo right now. Jerome found something out of the archives. Number 13, Team Canada. And uh, so if you go on Facebook, you'll see the photo. It's awesome. Blonde hair? <laughs> no, no, black hair. So how really? far back does that one go? Uh, well, at the Olympics, I had blonde hair. Yeah. I can actually show you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at that. Go up a little bit. Oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Wanda, how tall are you? 5'9". Five, nine. Five, nine. centimeters. I guess uh, volleyball, it's important. you got to have some height for volleyball. I'm not a volleyball guy, so be a Wh professional. Uh, women's, not... women's, do you need height? That's a good question. Uh, oh, yeah. It helps. Uh, Actually, if I walked on a court nowadays, they'd probably make me a defensive specialist. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Especially, yeah, I played middle, which is a taller person's position, but yeah. uh, I had hops, so I got to play that position. Mm. Well, well, speaking of middle, so yesterday I went over, we were just walked over to Dollarama, just picked up a few items, and so Nate, you, you remember Nate, big Nate, you've met Nate, yeah. he's six seven, six eight, right? Mm -hmm. He's just a lanky <laughs> tall dude and he's the owner of Zap Pizza Bistro on Maine and so I saw him in there and he's a really close talker right and and he's standing from me to you but his neck is touching me <laughs> do you know what I mean and he like played, a giraffe he, he played middle for the uh for team, team Canada, Canada as well yeah but you know we're trying to practice social and he's a very close talker right and so I'm like <laughs> edging my way back and I'm like bro I love you and I know you're not afraid of it but my kids are right there and like yeah, yeah. as that neck extends yeah. more and more from the torso right <laughs> yeah <laughs> can I can I ask you a question you know, you know when an Olympian walks into the arena or, or however it is that you walk in mm -hmm. with your team and you're waving your flag like right before the games start? Do you remember that moment? Sure do. Can you describe it to me? I feel like that is one of the most powerful things to watch, and I can only imagine what these participants are thinking when, a whole, when th tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or whatever it is, people live, and then you know that there's millions watching. How do you feel? It's got to be great. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty overwhelming and it's pretty emotional and mm -hmm. I can remember walking in and just kind of looking up and everything and then you hear your country being chanted mm -hmm. and I started shaking and then I just started crying for no reason and you're just like so overwhelmed with joy and pride that it's just yeah it's awesome and every time I watch the Olympics now that's the same feeling I get. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I know exactly what they're feeling right now. Yeah. So do you feel a lot of pressure at that moment, or do you are you just reveling in the uh, in the love? Uh, no, no pressure. Just wow, we made it here, and let's just enjoy every moment mm -hmm. in the moment. Awesome. So you and RJ started. Um, I guess we let's talk about that. How okay. you and RJ came to be because you coached her. Is that correct? You want yeah. to tell us? But, so how did you? first meet like let's just talk about so we were in the in the basement and i remember seeing you coming in and you were training a lot of you know you can tell who is a volleyball player and who like you know they have different bodies they move differently right i was training yeah. my hockey players you're training your volleyball players so what was your first kind of impressions or what did you like when you saw me doing my thing like let's go there uh when i first saw you i was like wow i i really liked what you were doing and i really felt that it was uh I could learn a lot from you and then mm. for the first time in my life I was actually looking at someone who's training athletes as athletes, athletes. not yeah. like bodybuilders <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I thought okay I want to play world masters games again and I'm mm. like I, and I was coming off the injury and stuff and I was thinking 
uh, I think I'd like to get this guy to train me, but mm. it took me a year <laughs> to get <laughs> in shape yeah. so I could actually have him train me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's going to kill me if I otherwise, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, and, we, had, uh, we had a lot of fun. I, we got really creative because you really only had one arm, right? Yeah. And like a knee we a thing. And we were like, pretty competitive. But, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I saw you come into the gym, right? So I, I was like, okay, I see she's training volleyball players. So anytime I'm doing any type of jump training, I'm jumping and touching the ceiling. You know what I mean? So every time I didn't, I knew you, but I didn't know you. And I was like, every time she was training and I was demonstrating where I was working out, I'm jumping as high as possible. So I think I remember one time I was doing like these super, these, uh, what are they called? Super Mario's. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like a high knee drive. And I was like up and I was like trying to reach and touch the ceiling, reach and touch the ceiling. And it was just to kind of impress you. So I never really thought that we would work together as a coach kind of client perspective. Uh, I, I don't know. I just didn't think that would come. And I'm glad it did because it really opened me up to working through adversities. And then also because, you know, the kids, they're all like pliable and they don't have any injuries. So it's easy to train athletes like that. But as soon as you yeah. start to focus on, okay, how do we maintain your body but still push you to the, to the limit? And then at the same time, how do we work with this injury, right? Because your shoulder, you can even like, right? Even right now, what yeah. do we got? Show us your range right now. What do we got? Yeah, well, look at how you lead. Yeah. <laughs> but give me a wind-up, right? Like, give, me a, give me a, like, how you would, right? And that's actually yeah. pretty good. That's good. Considering what I saw when I saw you a couple, well, like a month ago. Wow. So what have you been yeah. doing? I'm still doing those stretches with the band, yeah. getting that fascia uh, loose and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do a lot of, well, band workouts, like a thin band mm -hmm. at like sports speed. And then I alternate that with uh, weight training, but like nothing heavy. I don't yeah. do heavy anymore. I don't need to do heavy anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> Lifting heavy. <laughs> These joints are like, nah, we're not doing that anymore. So, so we started this sports training today. Like I'm getting back into it, right? And right. we got two younger guys. One guy, he's, I need to lift heavy. I play rugby, right? I need to push heavy <laughs> things. I'm like, you need to push as heavy as you possibly can, but it needs to be fast. I said, yep. you lifting heavy things and moving them very slow is not going to help you on the field. It's just your ego, right? So like oh, we're, we're, sure. we're push, sled pushing the 45s. And then we had a guy jump on there and say, okay, do it. And he moved it at like two seconds of a foot. And it's like, well, that doesn't translate to sport. Sport is fast and power, no. right? And uh, I think that's a myth that in your 20s, you got to lift heavy. In your 30s, I think you start to learn that like there's a smarter way to do it. And then in your, like, in your late 30s, you hope that you got to figure it out by then, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Apply the... I, th I think more and more uh, people are realizing that pliability mm. plus strength is mm. the way to go. Because mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to be like 50 years old yeah. going, oh, I can't yeah. get up. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, huge. Yeah. But, like, where, where's that going to get you? And it's funny right? how you did that because you said 50 year olds. And, uh, and you know, if you don't <laughs> mind sharing, how old are you? I'm, it's, it's on Google, so we've already searched it. Yeah. <laughs> 57. It's 57. 57 years old. So there, yeah. this whole coronavirus, you know, is affecting those above 60. Like, are you afraid right. of the coronavirus? Uh, I'm a little bit concerned because I do have an autoimmune disease. I have rheumatoid arthritis. Right, so right. that means my system is a little bit weaker than most. So, yeah. But uh, I'm staying home as much as possible. Mm. And uh, either the, other than the grocery runs. Yeah. <laughs> So how are you how are you keeping your body conditioned because a lot of people don't real and this is what's happening right now in the fitness industry is everybody like most people are falling off at this point they're just not motivated they like to be in person they they need that trainer and it's good but you don't have a choice right now right so if right. you don't use it you're going to lose it and then it's going to be so hard to get back right Well I tapped into my clients and uh, a few of them uh, I do one on one FaceTime, just yeah. like this. Like they have like little workout area, and mm. you know, we still try to keep that communication going and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and it keeps them motivated. Yeah. And I'm uh, trying to get a group on Fridays, so at the end of the week, so they can get through the weekend and 
We just all do like the FaceTime. Just community group stuff. Workout. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just to keep them uh, tapped in, and it, you know, like my the group of people that I have, everybody knows everybody, so it's it's pretty. It's been a pretty easy transition like that. Mm-hmm. It's not like they don't. I don't know who you are, and you don't know me, and mm-hmm. but everybody's been like a community for years now, so mm-hmm. it's been. What, what, what type of training do you do? How, how do you train your clients? Uh, well, I have a few athletes, a uh, couple of boxers. Okay. More than that, actually. Uh, so I train them quite differently than the rest that are my age or over. Mm, okay. <laughs> so we're the full body, pliability, uh, functional training. So prior to the corona, you would meet one-on-one with your clients, let's say at their house or at their gym or or wherever, and you would put them through a workout specific to them? Kind of. Yes. Yeah? Okay. And so, sometimes I have two or three uh, in my space, and but they all have different different programs. Okay. So you will, you will train group fitness, small groups, but you give them individual workouts within the group? Yeah. I see. And how long, and you've been doing this since forever? Has this been your career? Since, well, 19 years now. Holy smokes. Holy <laughs> smokes. So it started in the 90s? No. Nope. Oh, 2001. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 2001. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Almost. Nice. Yeah. And how, how has your business changed since the uh, corona? I mean, uh, without with the obvious being the Zoom call like we are right now? Uh... Yeah, <laughs> that's Just it. Like that. You still manage to that's keep it. them engaged, though, like uh, you know, through through Zoom, through Messenger, through calls. Is that is that how you're keeping them yeah. going? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how are you finding that they're responding to this? Are they falling off? Are they keeping on? Are they struggling? Uh, actually, they were when it first started. They were falling off, and now they're all like, "Okay, we got I got to yeah. move. I got to yeah. do something." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. You something. gained that five pounds, and you're like, oh, shit. Never mind. Back to it. i yeah. got to figure out how to do this. Yeah. I think the first week, yeah. we all kind of saw it as an all-inclusive vacation, exactly. right? Like, we all get to just kick back. Like, I don't have really any work. I have no idea what's going on. So, you know what? I'm just going to eat whatever I want. Yeah. And then now, yeah. people are like, okay, I need to, like, chill out on those chips. I need to chill out. Like, I've watched way too much Netflix in the past couple of days, yeah. and I'm bored of all this. Like, well, the, I think the reality of the situation is, is kicking in. I, I know I always had this, like, ah, they'll fix it. Yeah. It's going to be quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now, you know, we got to set up our environments <laughs> yeah. for a new way. It's a marathon. For, yeah, for at least four weeks, yeah. probably even longer than that. Yeah. So I feel people, you're right, like, they thought it was a little mini vacation, yeah. and, you know, they'll bring up too many cookies and, and <laughs> yeah. drink a little too much wine, and then yeah. you realize, okay, wait a minute, i got to – I got to figure this out, you yeah. know, so the new world we live in. But anyways, so that's good that you're still keeping people motivated, though. And I want to give a shout out to all the coaches out there, yeah. you know, wherever you are in the world and whichever company you're with and whichever style of training yeah. that you do. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a little bit less now prior to this. I see a lot of coaches where we're kind of like ragging on each other where my yeah. way is the right way and your yeah. way is the, the bad way. I've seen a little shift w- with respect to the narrative being that we're all sort of like united in this yeah. thing. So shout out to anybody who is motivating, educating, inspiring, just getting people to move. Mm-hmm. Well done on your part. We need you more than there. Just as yeah. much as the frontline workers in, in hospitals, we need coaches to make sure that you're trying to stay as healthy as possible to keep you out of that hospital. I find our industry is like one of the only industries that are putting out positivity. Mm-hmm. Like I, I yeah. you know, on Instagram, I get things that are not peop- like people that I'm following, but it'll be some type of gym. Maybe I'm biased. That's what I look at. But it's like every coach out there is trying to like enlighten the situation. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. what, tr- like personal trainers are, are really life coaches. Yeah. You bet. Right. The therapists. Yeah. And, and it's not just about beating you down with the workout. Like we beat you down with the workout for a bigger goal, but also to make you feel good. Mm-hmm. Right. And when I look at some of these like posts every day, a coach, even the, you know, the guys that are just training, 10 people they have it they have 10 clients they're still posting phenomenal content just like the guys that have two three hundred clients yep. right like it's the same kind of message yep. and what other industry does that i i didn't i don't know <laughs> i don't know i feel like it you know the world the is dj industry <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> the djs you <laughs> know what like the djs are trying new, to yeah i see that all these new live streams with yeah amazing djs that you'd never get a chance to see and they're mm. at every week there's someone going live and putting something positive out. Yeah. It's amazing. 
Well, that's the thing I like about right now too is that a lot of big wigs are gonna have are, are having to go backwards, right? Because before you would never get a, a you know a phenomenal DJ like Tiesto giving out free content, and now you know he's going he's he's like putting his iPhone up and he's going on Instagram Live and he's you know sitting there spinning for his audience, and mm-hmm. you know now it's just about like how can I stay relevant and how mm-hmm. you know i need to keep myself busy too yeah right yeah. and so these everybody's having to take a step back cut out their ego and and not think about you know how is this going to get me paid yeah you yeah know? yeah and right now i mean I, from a marketing standpoint so you know this podcast we talk about fitness and business from a business side a marketing side side we have a huge audience yeah. everybody's watching they're looking for content so this is the time to get yourself out there and make sure mm-hmm. that people get to know you they understand you see how you can handle a tough situation mm-hmm. because how you t- handle tough situations will build your character and that's what mm-hmm. people are going to want to see who's my coach going to be moving out of this yeah were they strong when things were, <laughs> yeah. were shitty or, yeah. or were they weak right yeah. you want to be strong right now and that's what all of us coaches need to be is we need to be everybody's foundation we need to be their rocks we need to be mm-hmm. their motivators and we need to get them through this yeah. and when they are through this and they're feeling better and they have money again yeah. and they're not worrying about dying from some coronavirus <laughs> yeah. then they're going to enlist us to help them out so that, that's the way that I'm looking at, uh, at it right now. That's why everybody should be throwing out some positivity in the world. So this morning I woke up and I'm sore. Like I am <laughs> sore and I, I've been doing double <laughs> workouts, right? And I'm usually, I usually work out four days a week. Like that's me, four days a week, 10,000 steps. But yesterday, today I woke up, I was exhausted, tired, sore. And I literally, so in your mind, you think one thing. And then one trick that I learned was to, to vocalize the opposite. Right. And mm-hmm. so I was like, hey, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm going to sleep in and this and that and, you know, whatever. And and then after I just said, you know what, you're doing it for. And I said this out loud. I said, you're doing it for them. And I got out of bed and I did my morning routine and I was good. Mm-hmm. I was like, that was it, man. It just took those words. I just said, you're doing it for them. Yeah. And I don't know who them is. Right. But I'm doing it for them. I said, yeah. and I got out of bed and I was like right into the ro- routine. And yeah. And that was it. I felt great. Well, you're doing it for the rest and of us. I crushed it today. Like yeah. I had a great workout. Yeah. And I was saying to, to Rick earlier and, and the team, I was like, when you wake up, you feel old and crusty. <laughs> but then you do a workout, <laughs> right? You do a workout and you feel young and vital. Always. Always. 100%. Like, yeah. Nobody ever left a workout and was like, I feel awful. <laughs> yeah. Nobody does that. You yeah. never do that. You always feel great. Even yeah. if it sucked and you hurt, you're like, ah, it's still kind of good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's true. Can I, uh, I feel like go ahead. I, I feel like now is an opportunity for people to actually like jump on board and and get into the shape that they yes they're the thinking time. about and always dreaming about because mm-hmm. you have the time now and it's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. there's really no excuse you, you can there's so so much content on Instagram Facebook mm-hmm. uh, with your trainer if you have one mm-hmm. and you just do like a 20 30 minute workout yeah. and anything that you see there and you're going to feel great and it's just going to and if you do it every day it's just going to build and as you know the more you work out the better you eat so yeah and the easier it gets too right (laughs) like Mm -hmm. yeah if you stop working out it's it's hard to start again Mm -hmm. if you just go through it and just you know see it right now i see this as kind of like a navy seals training it's something that i've always wanted to do except i don't want to do that <laughs> yeah don't, don't get me wrong i don't want to do that but the that's idea how if it this, is nice that's how i'm seeing the stretch so i'm like doubling up on my recovery i stretch three times a day water intake is up my you know taking tons of fish oils any anti like natural anti-inflammatories i can get and um i think right now it's the perfect time for people to invest in their fitness mm-hmm. and i know that yeah. everybody is because they're on EI or they got laid off, like you're getting 55% of your wage, but you're also spending probably 30% less money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For sure. And, and like there's people that had to cancel their all inclusive trips. Well, that's three grand a person, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, it's 15, two grand with, like to get out there, but when you spend on tips and blah, 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 it's three grand a person. So it's like, and if you're in a family of four, right? We know a couple people that had to cancel their trips. And hopefully you got that money back, but. If you're a family of four, you're looking at like 10, 12 grand. Mm -hmm. So now you have 10, 12 grand that you can reinvest in your body, right? And why not treat yourself like an athlete? This is what you get. That seven-day all-inclusive is going to come and go, and then it's just a memory. Mm -hmm. But you have to live in your body every single day. Right until the day you die, you can't. You, you know what I mean. And you can't just buy a new body. Yeah. You can refigure it and get Botox and lip <laughs> injections, but that doesn't change what's going on in the inside. The only thing that you can change on the inside is by putting in the work. Mm-hmm. And you can take all the pills and potions and everything, like whatever it is that is going to make you 
get stronger, vital. But if you don't put it to work, yeah, it does nothing for you. Absolutely. And that's the thing about the body. And that's why it should always be everyone's number one priority. And it should cost whatever it costs mm. to get in shape. Because to your point, yep. the only thing that you can escape is your own body. Yes. If you don't like your husband or your wife, you yep. divorce them. If you don't like your kids, <laughs> you send them to camp. If you don't like where you live, you move to a different city. Yes. If you don't like the car, you buy a new vehicle. Like, yes. You can escape everything except your body. Yes. And yet for some reason, it's the lowest on the, the priority yeah, list. It yeah. blows my mind. It should be your foundation. Of course. And it yeah. should be what you spend the most money on and yeah. spend the most time on. And it's what you should think about the most and, yeah. and really dive into it. And a little thing about motivation. And a lot of people are like, I don't even know how to get started. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, okay, coaches. We're, yeah. you know, we're unemployed and we don't yeah. ha we have the time. But eh, yeah. I want to lie, you know, like ha yeah. the, the motivation. And so here's what I want to say. Motivation happens in two ways. In the beginning, right? It's it is uh, external motivation, meaning that you have to watch a podcast like us. Mm. You need to hire a coach. You yeah. need to listen to great music. You got to go on YouTube and watch a motivational video. Mm. You have to find a way to start moving, or to make better habits, or to start eating salads instead of French fries. It's hard, <laughs> but it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. Maybe even like as short as a week. Yeah. You give yourself fourteen days, two weeks, and you're gonna something is gonna happen, right? You're gonna look in the mirror and you're gonna say. Something is different, right? Or your clothes are going to feel a little bit different. You know how it is. I mean, sometimes you get a little bigger, a little smaller. Mm. The tightness of your jeans, the <laughs> way your T-shirt looks. Yeah. But what will happen is this. One person, like I said, if you can power through two weeks of it, yeah. eat something good, move a little bit more, yeah. somebody is going to say something, <laughs> yeah. right? And then yeah. that becomes, they're going to say, oh, there's something different about you. Yeah. You look better. They're going to yeah. give you that little compliment, and then all of a sudden, all your internal mo motivation kicks in. Yeah. You don't need to find it from everywhere yeah. else. All of a sudden, you're like, forget the Pepsi. I just want water. <laughs> yeah. Let's walk to the store. So you just find it all of a sudden, and it really doesn't take that long. So no. if you're sitting on the fence right now, and you're thinking, ah, it's too hard. It's, yeah. I don't want to. I'm scared about yeah. going outside because I'm going to get infected, yeah. or I can't go to the gym. <laughs> or, yeah. The thousand different things that are going through your body mm. one of the things you need to eliminate is the fact that it's going to take forever it, yeah. it actually isn't nope. you know everything is relative i mean if you want to be an olympic athlete right uh you might have to train for years and years but yeah. if you just want to start incrementally looking just a little bit better incrementally feeling just a little bit better one percent better as we do it mm -hmm. it doesn't take that much no. and it's not that hard no so Get off the fence. Just start doing something. Just start doing something. Stop researching yeah. and start doing something. <laughs> start doing something. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Fine. So my business grew when, I don't know when that was, 2010 or 11 or something. And I just decided, hey, like I need to grow this business because I was losing. I, for me, it was all about the team, right? Like I had a lot of great team members that I've had in the past. And they just, you know, they would work with me in the summer. And then, you know, as my guys started getting older, more mature with the different mindset, they have to pay bills, right? Mm -hmm. So I was used to bringing on little students, right? Like when Andrew started with me, he was 21, right? So it's like he lives at home and they don't have any bills, right? And then I started getting into like the 30 year olds and like these guys need to make a living. So I decided that one day, my number one goal first was to just have a team. I remember I said this, I said, I want one full timer and I want two part timers. That was my very first goal when I said, I'm taking my business serious. And then I started doing research on YouTube, just like, what are the elements of a fitness business? Like, I have no idea. I'm not a business. I'm a coach. You know what I mean? And so I started that. And then I followed, was, was following five people, right? And they were all different. And then I latched on to Bedros. So that's the thing is that now there's just so much content out there, mm -hmm. right? Like we post our stuff live three times a week now. And we have the private stuff. And we do that because, well, we want to be able to succeed coming out of this, right? So we have yep. to build business, right? So there's tons of free content. But we're providing high def videos and we have nutritional stuff and two workouts a day and all this stuff so it's definitely worth the value but you got to find that one coach right now and then just narrow your focus and just do what they do mm -hmm. right because if 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 you're looking to make that next leap then you need to just find what fits like your type of personality yeah. right if you want to be a part of a community that's like our big thing is like is our community you want to be involved with the community so find that so if you like the one-on-one -on -one trainer then Wanda is probably your best bet if that's the type of training that she does and just follow everything she does mm -hmm. right if you want to do the stuff that we're doing then just follow what we're doing don't like broaden your scopes and follow a bunch of people because then you have too much there's that's the problem nowadays is there's too much content out there mm -hmm. right and so you need to find that and follow and then go all in yeah right the best clients that we have are the ones that go all in because like okay you're all in 
I'm all in, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. every session, we're going to go hard. We're going to teach you about nutrition. You're going to get better, mm-hmm. right? So I would just tell everybody, narrow your focus and follow that person yeah. and then make that a l- 12 months. I you always bet. say 12 months. Do yeah. it for 12 months, then try on new things. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is don't don't be half half in, half yeah, out. No, you one can't. foot in, one yeah. foot out. You know, like we offer these 21 days, these 14 days, mm-hmm. these six these six weeks. And we, and we do that because we want to introduce people to this and we want them to form a habit. We want to get them used to walking into a facility. We yeah. want to get them used to being in a positive environment. But the reality is you're you're not, you know, you're not going to make great goals <laughs> that way. Or yeah. You're not going to attain great goals. Yeah. But. What I would suggest, and this is what I did with you when I first started, is I fin- financially committed and then I just did it. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't concerned about it. There yeah. was times when I didn't have the money to pay for it, but I, I just figured it out. And yeah. that'll be everybody's concern is I, I don't have the money. Yeah. You know what? Figure it out. Yeah. But don't don't half-ass it because yeah. you're going to get the half-ass results. But you jump in there, you follow your coach's lead, mm-hmm. and you and you be coachable. Right, Wanda? You know how it is. I mean, as a professional athlete, yeah. you have to be extremely coachable, yeah. and you will be successful. Yeah. That's it. You just got to commit and do it. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. So I've, In my business career, I've spent over $100,000 just on business coaching. You know what I mean? Because that, for me, the physical aspect is not something that I'll ever have a problem with moving forward, right? So I don't need to go and get a physical coach and stuff. like. I'll always be active. It's mm-hmm. just the way I am. So for me, I don't have to worry about the element. Mm-hmm. But I pay. So, like, I pay to my church, even, like, reoccurring. I have that. So I pay attention to the weekly sermons. I pay attention to the daily stuff because I invested in that. You bet. And then also my business coaching is that, I'm or like when I get business coach, like I'm I'm paying top dollar, so it's like I need to be yeah. attentive to what the coach is saying. And like you said, you can't be half. No, because you, you, half means nothing. You're yeah. not going to do anything. And you got to invest some money. Yeah. Put some money into it. Yeah. you know what I mean. That yeah. that develops that little that little guilt on your shoulder. Yeah. It's like wait a minute, you paid for this. Go yeah. get it and don't it. cancel it no matter what. Yeah. Just keep going. <laughs> Commit to it. You know, I feel like any program is about a 12 month span. Like a good program is in 12 months, you will get everything you need out of that program as long as you're doing everything they say. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's up to you to level up to the next. So since we have an Olympian on our podcast, we've never had that before. I, I want to, can I need you to dial back. I need you to remember the back wins. All right. I want to ask you some stuff. I feel like it's super. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I asked you about when you walked in and you and you felt the love and on the excitement of being of representing your country in front of a group of thousands, tens of thousands. I, I don't know. You can probably clarify the number. And then, of course, everybody watching at home, 60,000 60, were in the arena when you walked in. Oh, wow. man, that must have been crazy. Um, so just representing your your team alone. Do you remember how many people you walked in? Like how big was your group? Just kind of remind everybody how big was your was Team Canada? when you walked into that arena? We're talking Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. I think there is just over 600. 600 Canadians? 600 Canadians, Woo. 600 oh. athletes. Yeah. yeah. So participating in it obviously must have, must have been amazing. Uh, after the fact, do you still keep in touch with a lot of the Olympic athletes? Like, what, what happens right afterwards? Do you, do you still see each other, or everybody just goes their separate ways? I mean, that's, probably, that's the biggest sporting event in the world. How, you know what I mean? You almost want to be like, ah, see you later, man. <laughs> I'll see you in 20 years or what happens? Uh, well, you make a lot of friends at the closing ceremonies. <laughs> okay. okay. Which was, was pretty special. Uh, like this huge sea of red and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, <clears throat> they had this rule that we couldn't get on the field until a certain time. And, I mean, it was in Atlanta, so it was music orientated the uh, closing ceremonies like there was the pointer sisters there was ray charles there was nice. Stevie Wonder, and they all came out on these separate stages and it was like unbelievable and then the finale was uh gloria estefan Ooh, and wow. she's singing the conga and nice. all of a sudden team <laughs> canada jumps up yeah and we make this conga line nice and they're like no no you can't go on yet and we're like, ah. <laughs> So the sea of red and white goes down onto the onto the stadium field, and we pull out the big. I don't know if you've seen the Olympic closing ceremonies, but Canada always pulls out the biggest Canadian flag ever. Nice. So everyone's like got a piece of this flag, and people are in the middle, and we're like Mm -hmm. chucking them up in the air. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's pretty big bonding moment Uh, with athletes that you 
probably would never actually yeah. meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So it was pretty cool. Like you, we met like the athletes and track athletes. And, so do you have any relationships with anybody today? Like, did they still 20 years later or whatever it is that you still see or talk to, hang out with? Uh, some beach volleyball players. Uh, when I see uh, some of the cyclists, uh, some of the rowers. Okay. Uh, cool. It's not very often that you see them, but mm -hmm. you see them and you're like, hey, I remember you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ni 96 Olympic Games, correct? That's where you were? Yes. So Donovan Bailey, that's when he set that record, right? Oh my God, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Did you meet him? We weren't at the. Uh, yes, yes, we met him in the airport, actually. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, uh, I met him too. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> he came to our school, and he was part of Powerade, and so he had all these Powerades like out front. I guess we bought the most Powerades in all of Canada or something like that. <laughs> and so he came and he gave a speech. And I remember sitting there. So here's the fun part about it. Gave an awesome speech, met him. They had all these Powerades. And like, they just made this announcement. If you guys want Powerades, we're giving them out for free. The, everybody, it was a riot <laughs> at my school. No, I'm not even joking. Like, we were all, bro. It was like, I, I was a part of a mash riot and i was grabbing like cases and i was stashing them in like the everywhere and it was crazy we all it was nuts. like black friday <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. it, was, it was nuts yeah free gatorade eh? yeah cool yeah that was that was a pretty special moment with yeah. one because there was about a hundred of us at the uh, at the athletes village in our in our little area yeah and we're all watching we're all in this one room with this big TV and it's like the false start and then the false start and we're all like and then all of a sudden the, the race is over in less than 10 seconds and everybody in that little room there's about 100 of us and we're all jumping and hugging and crying yeah. going oh my god I can't believe he just won yeah. but it was pretty it was pretty special there's gotta be a powerful moment you know well he went yeah, nuts cool. after too I remember him just ah! He was like running around, yeah. and that's when like Mike, Michael Johnson from the U.S. was talking a lot of trash, right? And he, yeah. he beat him in that, in it, like they did a one-on-one -on -one race kind of thing after, or something like that, and he just crushed him. Yeah. Remember, Michael Johnson pulled up with the hamstring, and oh, you know yeah. what I mean? it was just such a great moment because Canada is not known for track. Now we are, which is crazy. Yeah. Like the little guys crushing it, but we are never known for mm -hmm. really that the track. Like we're hockey, right? When it comes to Olympics, everybody's just hockey, hockey, hockey. So to have a guy yeah. win gold. And set a record when somebody's tr in, talking trash. You know what I mean? Like oh that's, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. In their country. In their in country. The yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, the one? Do you have any other mem like memorable moments that stick out more than others from that time? Did you maybe? Uh, I don't know. I remember seeing Shaquille O'Neal going and going. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I would love to see Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cool, but the most memorable uh, thing for me was uh, at the opening ceremonies. Nobody, like they kept that under wraps, and nobody knew who was going to light the torch. And uh, mm. still happens to me. <laughs> you look up and you see Muhammad Ali oh, about wow. to light the torch. Oh, I remember that. And yeah. I, st I still Muhammad get Ali, eh? nice. overwhelmed. I can tell. Yeah, I can crazy. tell that was an was impactful moment. Yeah. Yeah. So Jordan was a part, wasn't a part of that 96 team. Was he? I think he was. I see Miller. I see, I'm looking at a photo right now. It's so, solid team, but I don't see Jordan. 96. In, How old was he? I'm trying to even calculate. No, he was because I spoke with Tony Kukoc because I talked with him the same day that they were going to play them. Like, mm. how's it going to feel playing against your teammate? Oh, like, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> hmm. So Donovan Bailey lighting or uh, winning the, the gold. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad Ali lighting the torch. Yeah, it's huge. What else? Uh, men's relay team winning gold oh, was great. Right. Because we, are, we were off. We weren't in the Athletes Village. We were at the AT&T Center. And these Americans walked in, and, like, and the race was going on. They're like, huh, how's the, how are the Americans going? Uh, well, they're not in the TV, <laughs> so they're, they're lagging behind, and then yeah. we won. Oh, yeah, we so that them. was quite special to see that, too. <laughs> That's good. And I guess probably the most 
uh, other memorable thing was we played Brazil. We played an amazing match. We lost them, but uh, we got a lot of compliments from the Brazilian coach. And then me and my friends uh, went out. We were trying to go out. We went to all these places we couldn't get in because there, everybody was everybody was full. Um, we went to this stage, and then I was like, uh, let's go over there. So we went over to this kiosk so I could grab a beer. And then all of a sudden, exhaustion hit, hit me, and I sat down, and then we heard this huge noise, and my friend was like, it sounded like a bomb, and I was like, no, it wasn't. It was like fireworks going off. And two seconds later, police car with a bomb squad thing drove by, and it was the bomb. Do you remember the bomb? I remember that. They actually, they actually just made a movie about it called Richard Jewell. So, and, uh, refresh yeah, our memories. So, so the, uh, a bomb went off at the, the AT&T stage. I think it was the AT&T stage. Wow. And I think one person was either killed or injured, and they blamed this uh, security guard. But they just made a movie about it. Uh, Clint Eastwood has, uh, really, has yeah. directed took, it. I'm looking yeah. at it. It took down an entire building. Read, mm-hmm. what, is, what else does it say on there? Can you read it? It was pretty scary. Uh, so you were you were close enough to hear the bang. I was at that stage like literally five minutes before him. So the stage where the bomb went off, you were there five minutes previous to it. Yeah. And f- so where and so where were you from that stage when it went off? We were across the street at uh, a kiosk. So you were and only across the street. Yeah. Wow. It's nuts. Yeah. That's a moment that you reflect on and think, you know, thank God, or how lucky are you, right? So Jeez. two people Pretty died lucky. as a result of the bombing. 100 were injured, yeah. and Eric Rudolph was convicted of placing 40-pound bomb filled with nails and screws in the Centennial Olympic Park. Yeah. Centennial. Yeah. So that was you were close to the Centennial Olympic Park. Yeah. Crazy. Because in that park, there were all these buildings that there were all these like parties going on but mm-hmm. we, fortunately we couldn't get into any of them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. turned out to be fortunate well so i guess uh, then, uh go ahead you know what i find wild is uh, that that happened july 27th okay so the bomb happened july 27th july 30th they reopened the park Three days. But coronavirus, we're, we're on lockdown <laughs> for four. Like, you know what I mean? We're less scared of bombs right. than we are of catching. Well, I guess that's contained, right? That's yeah. the thing. We don't know yeah. what's going to happen in the whole yeah. world right now. So, so what what are you telling people right now to to keep the keep their you know keep focused, keep motivated? Like, you know, it's it's going to be tougher and tougher for us, coach slash therapists, as the days go yeah. on to keep people going. Like, what are you what are you first telling yourself? Uh just to look, instead of looking at it as a negative, like look at it as an opportunity. Like so many people nowadays are like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. I don't have, yeah. you know, you don't have time for, for family, for yeah. doing things around the house yeah. or mm-hmm. learning this or that. So yeah. look at it as an opportunity to do all the things that you've wanted to do as, as opposed to the, trapped i mean we are fortunate that Mm. we can do this we're still having social contact Mm. i mean it's not like we don't we we can't see anybody or talk to anybody Mm -hmm. you know so a lot of Uh, people shouldn't digress yeah pick up the phone pick up the phone yeah (laughs) be old school hi how's it going i actually hear a voice (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, of course you know yeah (laughs) you think that's going to change you think in this time when we're we're kind of forced to not talk to each other, I, I still feel it's. Does anybody? It's almost like it's a bad thing to call, though. You yeah. know what I mean? I really feel like <laughs> I th- I think it's great to call your grandma, but yeah. do people really want the phone calls? <laughs> well, this guy laughed well, at me because you and I were they're texting. They're start and, learning to like them yeah, again. Yeah. Because it's like oh, and you know, like you, you can misread a text. Yes. Oh yeah, big time. Oh yeah. So easily, <laughs> like you don't know. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> Most of the world's problems are because of text messages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. I, I'm so, a I'm a phone call guy. It, like that's what that, see, this guy was laughing at me, right? We were texting back. I'm like, I'm just calling her, right? <laughs> and if we didn't call you, we would have been texting back for it. We probably wouldn't even have this all figured out by now. It'd be, and I'm just I like, just pick up the phone. Stop sending a hundred emails. Stop sending a hundred messages. Just call the person. Don't be afraid to hear a voice. You know what I mean? Like you're not well, worried about saying the wrong thing. Just say whatever you got to say, and it'll. The, an email takes an hour. Right, if you're sitting there oh, going back and forth, so long. yeah, and then it's like you could have just called them, and that would have taken mm-hmm. two minutes, right? Like, <laughs> well, and that's what I like. I mean, half of these jobs are like sitting there looking at emails all day long. I'm yeah. like, how do you get any work done? <laughs> yeah. I don't. I'm like, well, <laughs> just phone somebody. And yeah, you'd be done in like five minutes. Yeah, that's good advice. Pick up the phone, start calling people. <laughs> So we're uh, yeah. we're forty minutes into this podcast, so we're I think we're going to wrap it up pretty soon. But what I wanted to know now that, like I said, now that I've got an Olympian, a former Olympian, on our conversation here, I'm all about understanding the champion mindset, mm-hmm. right? I like to follow people who just can just get fired up, and they just you know, almost where they're just a little nuts. You know what I mean? And, and every coach <laughs> needs to be a little nuts, as he once told me. Mm-hmm. What gets you, how do you fire yourself up? What are the kind of the things that you would say to yourself? Like, you're a coach for a reason because, you know, you're a little bit higher than the average person. That's what makes a coach, right? What do you do to get yourself fired up? Tell me from a former Olympian. Like now or from before? <laughs> <laughs> right now? Okay, let's go back to when you are an Olympian. You yeah. Had, you had a game, you know, what, what it was some, some of your rituals. Uh, it wasn't so much about the game. It's more like practice. Oh yeah. I think if you're going to be a champion, you got to love practicing yeah. and getting better mm. and and getting better than the next person. And mm. for me, I was always, especially when I was uh, at the elite level, I was always ten years older than everybody. So mm. I always had someone going tick 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 on my door. So yeah. I was going to push myself harder than that. 20 year old kid like <laughs> so was that was your motivation go, I, was, I was gonna go in the gym and get 200 more touches before they even start yeah getting into the gym and start stretching so for nice. me that's the kind of mindset that I, said I had and i love practicing i just mm. like love to learn and yeah and learn from different people i don't didn't always want to learn from the same person uh, mm-hmm. so i would you know if i if we were playing cuba for example uh, who happened to be the best of the world at the time, I, I would love to go and watch their practice mm-hmm. when it was allowed, mm-hmm. which wasn't very often. But yeah. And just, like, like gather information and try to incorporate some of their stuff into my game and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So you're a very coachable person, <laughs> always willing to learn. Uh, I don't know how coachable I was. <laughs> 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 well, but one I th- was always w- willing to learn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of the things that I would certainly say is, uh, you know, the more more coachable you are, the more successful you will be. Wait, I want to know one thing. What do you got? So right now, a little bit older, you know what I mean. <laughs> Body aches a little bit more, right? How do you get yourself just ready for a workout, like your own personal workouts? Uh, I just tell myself every day, you are going to feel a thousand times better than you feel right now. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. Get up. Yes. Roll out. And let's do it. Let's and go. All right. I feel great. Great advice from Wanda Gwinnett, who's a former Olympian. Thank you, Wanda. Sorry, I probably got that last name wrong yeah. one more time. Dance it out, Wanda. We're almost done. Woo! Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>